Welcome to the vCloud Automation Center demo on adapting your cloud with VCO. We'll start out this demonstration with an overview of the capabilities of extensibility along the machine lifecycle. We'll then follow that up with some things that you should know in order to become familiar with any VCO workflow that you'll want to call out to. We'll then briefly explore the VMware Solution Exchange, where you're able to download VCO plugins to expand the functionality of VCAC. Given the method of the callouts this demo will take, we'll walk you through how to install the tools required to complete the steps. We'll then show you how to call to VCO workflows during the lifecycle state changes. VCAC's infrastructure provisioning process runs along a lifecycle, like we see here, going from the request state to the archive state. There are specific parts in this lifecycle where we're able to alter the process by calling out to another system. In this case, we'll be calling out to VCO. vCenter Orchestrator delivers out-of-the-box plugins with thousands of workflows to make integration with existing third-party systems easy without the need for professional services. The places along this lifecycle where we can call out to other systems relate to the machine's state. For example, the states where we're able to make callouts are building machine, machine provisioned, and destroying machine. We refer to these special states as stubs. The callouts that can be made at each of these stubs can be thought of as mini workflows to run tasks. You do not need to use a stub if you have no use for it. It will simply get passed over. From version 5.2, you might be familiar with an old method of making calls to VCO workflows. This way involves going to the VCAC designer and altering what the VCO workflow does at a specific time, often referred to as altering a stub. Recently, this process has been updated by using a VCO plugin, referred to as the VCAC plugin. This plugin automatically comes with VCAC's virtual appliance version of VCO. This video will focus on the simpler method of the two, using VCO's VCAC plugin. It's important to note that both methods are doing the same thing during runtime, except that using the VCO extensibility plugin will make it so you don't need to know .NET to alter the stub since the plugin takes care of it for you. The most difficult part of this process is finding the workflow that you want to use and making sure that it's configured correctly to be called by VCAC. Once you find the workflow that does what you want to, make sure to note the inputs and outputs. The inputs will be information that we need to collect from the VCAC system, and the outputs are things that we'll supply to the VCAC system, maybe use it to update the machine settings. It's very important that all of the inputs and output values in VCO workflows are in string format. If not, you'll need to create a wrapper in the workflow where VCAC supplies a string value and then translates it to a more complex format for the workflow to work with. To help with finding appropriate workflows and plugins, as well as to help accelerate the deployment of business relevant cloud automation solutions, the VMware Solution Exchange provides a library of VMware and partner provided vCenter Orchestrator workflows and plugins. Navigate to the VMware Solutions Exchange, click on the Cloud Management Marketplace. This brings you to a library of cloud management specific solutions. Under Cloud Automation, Select VMware vCenter Orchestrator to get a list of VCO specific solutions. If you find the need to create a VCO wrapper workflow in order to use a downloaded plugin, there's a blog article that describes the process of making that VCO wrapper on the vcoteam.info website. The use case we'll be demonstrating today is how to grab an IP address from a SQL database and then apply that IP to the virtual machine during provisioning process. We already have the VCO workflows created, which will get the information from the SQL database. We will review those shortly. In this image, you can see that we have a very simple IP asset management system set up in a Microsoft SQL database. The idea is that the VCO workflow will grab the next unused IP address and allocate it to the virtual machine for provisioning. Here you can see the VCO workflow. The basic flow is that we start out by running a SELECT statement against the Microsoft SQL database to pull back the next unused IP. 
The next task parses the results into a clean string of just the IP address. Next, we'll update the VCAC system with the IP address that was pulled from the database. Here it's important to note that we're updating a reserved custom property in VCAC called virtualmachine.network0.address in order to make sure that the machine is given the IP when it's provisioned. Next, we build an update query based on the information we know about the machine and the IP it was given so we can flag the IP as being used. Finally, we'll use the update query we just built and run it against the Microsoft SQL database to flag the IP as being used while at the same time writing the machine's name in the record as well. The first thing we need to do is to create a VCO endpoint. We'll do this by navigating to the infrastructure tab, endpoints, and endpoints again. If you're creating a new endpoint, you click new endpoint, orchestration, vCenter orchestrator. We already have one created, so we'll review that one. The name can be anything descriptive, but make sure that the address you enter has the HTTPS before the server address. Enter port 8281 after, and finally, if you're connecting to a VCO version 5.5 system, put slash VCO at the end. Before saving, make sure that you create a new property called VMware.vCenterOrchestrator.property. A warning will appear if you forget this step. We are now in the VCO client where we can create, alter, and in our case right now, execute VCO workflows. As mentioned before, we will be having VCAC run a workflow which will go into a SQL Server database to get an IP address. To accomplish this, I have already added a SQL database into the VCO configurations that relates to my IP management database. Here are the parameters that I used to add my SQL database. Get IP is the workflow that I've created. It's not standard and does not come out of the box with the SQL plugin. Instead, I'll be using the SQL and VCAC plugin standard workflows in succession to follow the process we saw earlier of grabbing an IP from the database, updating the VM in VCAC, and then updating the SQL record. On the initial run, you must create a connection to the VCAC server and the VCAC plugin has to be installed. To create the host connection, navigate to vCloud Automation Center, Configuration, Add VCAC Host. I've already done this for the system. Here you can see the parameters that I use to connect to the VCAC system. Name can be anything descriptive. The host refers to the VCAC Windows machine, also known as the Infrastructure as a Service machine. Make sure to include the HTTPS before the URL everything else can be left as default. After pressing next, enter your model manager account name and password. This would be the service account or user the VCAC was installed as on the IAS machine. Enter the password, press next, and then enter the domain on the final page before hitting submit. The next step is the installation and it can be found by navigating to the vCloud Automation Center, Extensibility, Installation, Install VCO Customization. For the vCloud Automation Center host, select the host record we created in the last step. In the next screen, you can choose which stubs you would like to activate this plugin for. You can leave the default values for this, even though for this demo we'll only be using the building machine stub. The last screen refers to how many custom day two operations you would like to create. We won't be using these today, so you may want to set the number to zero before hitting submit. Now that the plugin is installed, we can go and assign a VCO workflow to a blueprint state change. I've already run this for my environment, and here are the parameters I used. Because I want this VCO workflow to run at the very beginning of the lifecycle, I chose the building machine state. Next, I'll select our host that we created earlier. 
Then choose the blueprint we want to assign this action to. I'm choosing the Warehouse Manager GA blueprint here, but you can click the field to add any blueprint simply by accessing the list and then adding to it. For our purposes here, we do not want to apply this to any existing machines. In the final screen, choose the VCO workflow that you would like to run. As mentioned, I've created a VCO workflow called GetIP. I could easily select any other workflow within VCO. We don't need any other information from the end users, so we'll leave the input question as no. And we're not interested in adding any other values to the blueprint, which is good for keeping track of series succession, so we'll leave that as no as well. When you hit the submit button on this workflow, it will go to VCAC and update the properties of the blueprint that you selected. Changing gears into the VCAC UI, you can see that the custom property referring to the building machine state was added with a value that corresponds to the unique identifier of the VCO workflow it will run. Now, if I were to go out and request the Warehouse Manager GA service, you can see that the GetIP VCO workflow runs. If I go to the administrative view of the machines, I can see the details of the newly created Warehouse Manager 006 machine. Here, I can see that the IP address has been assigned to the NIC, ending in .40. And if we look at the SQL database, we have confirmed that the IP is now in use and the proper machine has been linked to it. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and we hope that it was informative. To learn more about vCloud Automation Center, please refer to the additional videos available.